So SD is what we're going to look at this video. This is a system for testing arguments of SL for validity. <laughs> the way that it works is it uh, you you have the premises and the conclusion, and it breaks down the reasoning that goes from the premises to the conclusion into simple steps, sort of like a ladder that runs from the premises to the conclusion. Each of the steps that it breaks the reasoning down into is truth preserving. So if the starting points are true, then the conclusion has to be true, right? Each of these steps is such that if, if where you're starting is true, then that step can't take you to something false. So if you go through um, starting with the premises and you have truth preserving steps all the way and you get all the way to the conclusion, by these steps, then you know that the argument has to be deductively valid. Um, so, you know, for example, the uh, the philosopher W. V. O. Quine once said that what a proof was was a proof derived a conclusion from obvious starting points by obvious steps, and that's basically the idea of SD. Right, every step in a derivation is obvious. It's obviously truth preserving. I mean, it's not obvious in the sense that when you first look at the rule, you will immediately see, oh, of course, right? It's obvious in the sense that it's not possible for it to lead you to, to a false result. <clears throat> and so then, because of the fact that you're always following these rules, um, if your premises of your argument are true, then if you can derive the conclusion from those premises, then the uh, your, the conclusion also has to be true. And that's the definition of deductive validity. So that's how this is a system for testing arguments for validity. The system itself uses what's called natural deduction. So the rules are meant to parallel the way that ordinary logical reasoning works. They're rules that would be familiar to, I mean, they're, they're similar to the rules that are you or yeah, to, to the sort of inferences that we use in natural language when we're giving arguments in ordinary life in uh, what are called prose proofs, where, you know, somebody will just try to prove something in a paragraph, you know, or, you know, in an explanation of why it has to be true. Um, so, so it differentiates it from something like if you were to look at the truth trees in the uh, in the textbook, right, truth trees are also a system that you can use to prove that arguments are valid, right? But the rules that truth trees follow, they're not supposed to parallel anything that we use in our ordinary life at all, right? And this is. So let's get into some uh, definitions. So derivation in SD, this is a series of sentences of SL. And each of these sentences is either an assumption or it is obtained by pre or from previous sentences by one of the rules of SD. And a sentence is derivable from a set of assumptions, gamma, if, if and only if, there is a derivation in SD that leads from members of gamma to P. Um, some terms and conditions may apply, meaning actually the definition is a little bit more complicated than that, but we're going to go and see the complexity later on. The way that this is written is with this symbol here. This is called a single turn style. Uh, so if we want to say the P is derivable from the set gamma, then we write a gamma single turn style P. Now, you're probably looking at that symbol and thinking of this. Remember this notion of truth functional entailment, right? Gamma truth functionally entails a sentence P if and only if there's no truth value assignment on which every member of gamma is true and P is false. And that is written with this symbol here, which is called the double turnstile. Uh, these have very similar symbols because they're very closely related concepts. The relationship between them is this. So SD has this, this property where it's, 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 it's called sound, right? The property is soundness. If a sentence is derivable from a set gamma, then the set gamma truth functionally entails that sentence. What this what this amounts to is that the rules of SD really are all truth preserving, right? If uh, if every member of the set gamma is true, right, then and 
P is derived is you know there's a derivation of P that follows all the rules of SD. Then and all the members of of gamma are true. Then P also has to be true. SD is also complete. If gamma truth functionally entails P, then there exists a derivation of P from gamma. Um, you're not guaranteed to be able to find it, right? There's no algorithm for finding these derivations, uh, but we can prove that the derivation does exist. So, yeah, the relationship between these two is that they're actually, they're materially equivalent, right? Uh, P is derivable from gamma if and only if gamma truth functionally entails P. We do not prove that in this course. Uh, it is proved in uh, Phil 220. <clears throat> so the last thing we'll look at in this video is the structure of a derivation. So a, a derivation has four parts. And, and I should say, so there are, I mean, we're going to be looking specifically at the derivation system SD, but there are different, different derivation systems, right? And there are different ways of formatting them. But there are these four features that all derivations have in common. So first of all, you have line numbers. They do what line numbers do. They number things in sequence from one and up. You have sentences of SL, right? This is the main, you know, the, the core of your derivation is the sequence of sentences of SL. You have justifications, which explain how each of the sentences was derived from earlier lines so that you can, you can see that they were all derived correctly. And you have scope lines. And these lines help you keep track of what assumptions have been made at each stage in the derivation. So here's an example. This is one that is, this derivation is formatted using the formatting method that's used in the textbook. So over here, you have your line numbers. Here, you have your sequence of sentences of SL. Um, these here are your scope lines. And notice that there are three sets of them. You have a scope line here that marks out what is called the scope of these three assumptions. You have a scope line here that marks out the scope of this assumption. And another one here marking out the scope of this assumption. And over here, you have your justifications. And you'll learn with these, what all these abbreviations mean. So in the next video, we'll start looking at the rules of SD and how those work.